Today I am flying long haul in economy on American Airlines. American is the largest airline in the world by passenger numbers, but its reputation is a bit mixed. Join me as I review their hard product, their service and the overall experience. So how good are American these days? And more specifically, are they a good option for intercontinental flights? Well, there is only one way to find out. Good morning guys and welcome back to another video. Today I am flying American Airlines in economy from London Heathrow to New York JFK. And yeah, I don't really know what to expect. I have flown American before, but that was a very short flight in the US many years ago, so a completely different product. Now, a couple of months ago, I reviewed China Eastern and I wasn't a big fan of that airline, to put it mildly. The reason I am bringing this up is because when I published that video, quite a few people commented that American is worse. And one person in particular commented that if I ever fly American, I will sing the praises of China Eastern. Well, I doubt it. But let's head to the airport and find out. The journey began in my hometown of Luxembourg City. I first had to get to London, so I took a quick 50 minute British Airways hop to Heathrow Airport. As both BA and American are part of the One World Alliance, this flight was included in my itinerary. As such, if you book US-bound American Airlines flights, starting in European cities where there is no direct connection, you'll likely first have to fly to London with BA. To keep this section short, British Airways used an Airbus A320 with a modern and comfortable cabin, and the flight was bang on time. The flight also included a bottle of water and pretzels. Overall, very satisfactory for a short intra-European hop. This will be shortly landed into London. Now please return to your seat and make sure all your personal belongings are safely put away. Alright then, welcome to London Heathrow Terminal 3. We arrived a few minutes early at around 10 past noon UK time. I now had about 3 hours to kill. Luckily I didn't have to change terminals, as this was also the departure terminal for my flight to New York at 3.15pm. There was no passport control, as I wasn't entering the UK. But there was a security check for transit passengers, which took no more than 10 minutes. Opened in 1961, Terminal 3 is where most One World Airlines operate from. We are now in the principal food and retail area and I have to mention that I really don't like the layout of this terminal. All the shops and restaurants are concentrated in this section of the terminal, which doesn't get much natural light. The gates, on the other hand, are miles away in a completely different area. Walking to your gate can easily take 20 minutes from here, meaning that if you want a quick snack, you'll have to run. Anyways, I ended up buying a poke bowl and a coke from a place called Yo2Go. It was expensive, but very tasty and probably the healthiest option at this airport. On a different note, the Wi-Fi at the airport was working well, but not very fast. About an hour later, I embarked on the long walk to my gate, number 18. You can see that there are no restaurants or shops close to the gate, just two vending machines. And here's my ride to New York. A Boeing 777-300 delivered in 2013. American has 20 of those and uses them on intercontinental routes such as London, Sao Paulo and Hong Kong. We started boarding around 40 minutes before departure and the process was organized and efficient but for some reason the electronic gate didn't work with my ticket. Not a major problem though, as one of the staff members scanned my ticket manually. In a jiffy I was making my way through the jet bridge onto the plane. This 777 has a very premium focused configuration. The cabin features 8 seats in first, 52 in business, 28 in premium economy and 216 in economy. 
The coach section is in a 343 layout, which is typical on this aircraft. And here's my seat, 39 Lima. First impressions, this cabin looks a bit dated. The seats aren't the best and the headrest doesn't offer a lot of flexibility. Those minor complaints, however, do not make this a bad experience. So let's get to the positives. Even though this is a day flight, there were blankets and pillows provided and the legroom is decent. There is a universal power plug and a USB port. The highlight of this product, however, is the in-flight entertainment system, which I'll show you later. So yeah, by and large, a decent hard product. Not among the best in the sky, but perfectly acceptable for a six and a half hour flight. We soon began our taxi to the runway and the safety video came on. We took off bang on time at 12 minutes past three in the afternoon. Immediately after reaching cruising altitude, the crew began with the first meal service. The food came no more than 30 minutes after takeoff. So what do Americans serve on a transatlantic flight? Well, there were two options, chicken or vegetarian pasta. And I went for the chicken. It came with rice, beans and a very tasty sauce. The meal also included a bread roll with cream cheese and butter, a bottle of water, some salad and a dessert cake. And yeah, the meal was very tasty. Apart from the salad, which was a bit too dry and didn't come with dressing, everything was perfectly acceptable for an economy class meal. Not bad at all. I also applaud the fact that American does not use plastic cutlery. Better still, they serve these bottles of Cabernet Sauvignon, which I really appreciate. After the meal, I checked out the loo, which wasn't as clean as it could have been, and there were no amenities. It was then time to have a look at the in-flight entertainment system, which turned out to be fantastic. Hundreds of movies and TV shows, including entire franchises. There are also great moving maps and lots of games, as well as live TV. The offer here is world class. From my experience, only Emirates has more. The 777 also has onboard Wi-Fi, but it's not what you would call cheap. I ended up watching Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. This was my first time seeing it, and I have to say, this movie is garbage. Why did they turn one of the greatest adventurers of all time into a miserable, sobbing, uninspiring sidekick to Phoebe Waller-Bridge? I was appalled. But anyways, we are off topic here. This is an airline review, not a movie rant. So let's get back to it, shall we? We have to mention the service and cabin crew. Both were amazing, friendly, efficient and professional. They came around every half an hour to check on passengers and offered snacks and coffee all throughout the flight. There was also a well-stocked help yourself snack bar in the back of the plane. I wish more airlines had something like this. On a different note, I couldn't help but notice that the cabin crew members were all in their 40s or 50s. That might be because only the most experienced flight attendants are chosen for the very strategic London to New York route. I know some airlines have policies like this, but I am not sure about American. If you guys know more, please enlighten me in the comments down below. The hours flew by and we were now over Eastern Canada. The crew handed out a delicious chicken wrap. Just what I needed. After more coffee and some stunning views over Long Island, we started our descent into New York City. You can see the skyline of Manhattan in the background here. We landed at 5.30 pm local time, half an hour earlier than expected. Well done, American! And here we are, welcome to JFK Terminal 8. As we are disembarking, it's time to reveal the price. I paid 299 euros for this journey, which is a very reasonable price for a transatlantic flight. The fare also included luggage and seat reservation. Departing in Luxembourg instead of London actually made the ticket a lot cheaper. You can find similar fares on select Lufthansa, KLM or Top Air Portugal routes to New York. But don't start your journey in their respective hubs. 
If you fly directly to New York from London, Frankfurt or Amsterdam, prices can be much higher. Passport control and customs ended up taking around half an hour, which is quite fast for JFK standards. So, how would I rate American Airlines? Well, this flight undoubtedly exceeded my expectations. The hot product was a bit outdated and the seats weren't that great. The overall experience, however, was surprisingly positive. The food was decent and the service was top-notch. A full meal, a wrap and unlimited snacks on a 6-hour flight is pretty fantastic. In conclusion, American offers a competitive economy product, but it is certainly nowhere near elite carriers like Turkish Emirates or Singapore. As such, American gets a solid 6 out of 10. And for those who commented that American is worse than China Eastern, maybe you should get yourself a space shuttle, because you are living on a different planet. Anyways, I would love to know, what is your opinion on American Airlines? And how do they compare to other US-based carriers? Please share your stories in the comments down below. As always, thanks very much for watching and see you again next week. Goodbye.